you want a free- Forsooth, my lad, it's time for Throne of Eldraine. Preview card? You look like a show host. What? A preview card for- Throne of Eldraine. Sure, what's it gonna cost us? Nothing, like I said. Here, uh, take the card. Thanks, mister. Let me see this. <gasps> Whoa, thanks! I can't wait to show the guys! I'm Phil DeLuca. I'm Shivam Putt. And we are Commander In. Just for you, I'm trying not to laugh every single time I say that, but because <laughs> we know you don't like laughter, Shivam. Yeah, you know me, I'm just the joyless spike here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us, everyone. We put a spotlight on community issues, but never ever do we talk about three banned topics. Religion, politics, Hearthstone. And we have a wonderful show lined up for you. <laughs> this episode, we're talking about all sorts of technical... I mean, uh, we're talking about... No. This episode, <laughs> we TED Talk. talking about our Throne of Eldraine preview card. Um, but first, uh, if you want to know how to help the show... You can tell all your friends and share the show. Show them how to subscribe on whatever podcast app you're using. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and smash that button so that you get an alert every single time we post a video. Every time. Or you can just uh, support your content creators by going up to patreon.com. Oh, no. By going up to commanderandmtg.com slash donations. Yes. It's still so new, Shivam. We Still. put all of our donation links in one place so that you can decide how you want to give to us to help us keep the lights on, help us keep us bringing new content to you week in and week out. Uh, we genuinely appreciate each and every one of you who does help out. And oh, if you're a Patreon member, you can join our Discord channel, which is actually our Discord channel is open to everybody, but Patreon members get special channels directly special that they can talk access. to us. Yeah, they absolutely uh, do. And we appreciate each and every one of you guys. Uh, and gals, really. Um, it's just it's a fantastic community, and we're grateful. Yep, we very much are. So head on over there. Uh, so I'll try not to lurch at the camera when I say things. <laughs> so head on over there. Support us. You can see we need uh, we need your assistance. And thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you on our Discord channel, too. Um, also, we have very special sponsors Shivam, uh, several months back, uh, was bragging about his really fancy quiver, uh, and he's got a teal quiver, which is a, a long deck box that holds five commander decks, double-sleeved. Oh, do you have it handy? Mine, uh, because I'm silly, I left it in the other room. And, uh, look at this deck box. It's gorgeous. It, it has, uh, pockets and carrying case, and of course... Our sponsors now for most of our giveaways are Quiver Time. Wow, check that out. Wow. Yeah, for those of you listening at home, I have a bright blue, let's say, about a yard long deck box that's made out of really nice leather. It's kind of waterproof. Uh, it holds about five of my EDH decks, double sleeve, plus room for dice and tokens. And I can roll up my playmat, shove it into the top pocket, and keep it there to hold all of my other cards and stuff down. Yep. Uh, it definitely carried its weight in GP Vegas, that was for sure. Yeah, it's an excellent deck box. It, and I have a uh, bright pink one and a purple one. And uh, then the other color that they offer is black. So you can uh, order these from directly from QuiverTime.com or go up to Amazon and order them. Or you can take part in our, co our giveaway contest every month. And uh, this month, uh, which is, what, September already, we're going to announce our rules for the Quiver Contest on our Twitter. And we'll pin that as well. So follow us at Commander and MTG on Twitter, and we'll tell you all about it. Um, and, uh, yeah, our, our Quiver giveaways are ridiculously popular. So um, 
join in there. It's a lot of fun. And frankly, we would be using these products even without the sponsorship. They're just that good. And I'm a big fan. I, they're a really good company. They're very responsive and they're oh, really fantastic. great customer service. Yeah. You were saying that your friend had, uh, one of your friends had damaged uh, their quiver? Yeah, one of my friends has damaged their quiver and uh, quiver reached out to them on Twitter and was able to help replace and uh, fix their item. It's really, it's surprisingly, uh, it's like a very small company, but they're really, really cool. So I'm super happy to support them. They're happy to support us. It works out really well. Yep. And even if you already own a quiver, if you win our contest and win the quiver portion of the contest, because of course they make sleeves and they now make uh, small deck boxes, 80 card deck boxes, they will actually reimburse you for the cost of your quiver if you don't want to select a new one. Um, not many people need to. I need to. I actually need four, so I'm going to be getting all of them. But uh, four? <laughs> four. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, Shivam. I just love the quiver, so... <laughs> uh, but I did carry two of them with me at um, GP Vegas, and then when I was at Strategic, I'm running the event. I actually put both uh, quivers in my backpack, and uh, it worked out pretty well. So we uh, we uh, appreciate quiver, and uh, we're not here only to talk about our quivers. So shall we actually get to the main topic? First, introduce Throne of Eldraine. Yes, Throne of Eldraine, the forthcoming fall set the fairy tales in European kind of like cultural mythology set, a set that a lot of us have been waiting for, for quite a long time. It looks really cool. We talked about, I think previously on one of the new segments, how there's like 12 million different versions of booster packs coming out for this set. Yeah. There's a number of like the card frames are really weird. Uh, as of our recording, they've just started revealing some of the cards. Like there's a brand new food token that I personally am super stoked about because God knows I love me some food. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the important thing, though, is that today is our preview card. Yes. Well, let's let's tease it just a little bit more. You can you'll follow hashtag MTG TED. So our TED talk, like Shivam said before, I'm on laugh uh, every on time I see that, though, all the social media. And uh, it's a 269 card set released on October 4th, 2019. Um, I think Mark Rosewater said it's a top-down design set inspired by uh, romantic Arthurian myths uh, based on Camelot and on one hand and uh, Grimm's fairy tales on the other. And we're seeing a lot of the fairy tale aspects of this, uh, including the uh, the Flaxen Intruder, a Goldilocks analog, um, uh, except she kills the bears. And oh. we saw a Little Mermaid analog today. We saw yeah. a Beauty and the Beast analog today. And, of course, we saw the new Planeswalker, Oko, who is uh, basically equivalent of, like, Oberon or Puck or one of those trickster gods from, like, you know, European uh, mythology. It looks pretty rad. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Um, so the pre-release happens on September 27th to the 29th, uh, and the first weekend you can draft it, including Friday Night Magic, is uh, October 4th. This set also features, like you were saying, those weird uh, uh, frames. It's got uh, story frames, and it has collector uh, collector boosters. Okay, so Throne of Eldraine also has uh, some fancy frames, including collector boosters. And we're going to be showing you both the regular version and the collector booster version of ours. It has that awesome, um, uh, almost full art frame, so it's pretty cool. Um, and uh, the expected price range is between twenty to twenty-five dollars for the collector boosters, which is kind of crazy. They don't have uh, 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 retail prices anymore, suggested retail prices, and these are only printed in English and Japanese. So make sure you can get um, your hands on them if you want them. The collector boosters are going to have one rare mythic rare with extended art. That's what we'll be showing you today as well. One foil rare mythic rare. Uh, nine foil commons or uncommons. That's pretty good. Three non-foil special frame cards. Those are the showcase cards. That's the term. And that's where that Flaxen Intruder has that one with the vines all over it. That looks um, kind of like a storybook. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. And uh, then one non-foil ancillary card, which is the buy-the-box card, a new card from Planeswalker decks, or a new card from the Brawl decks. Uh, and a foil token. So that's pretty good. They're, the collector boosters are packaged 12 to a box, so I guess you're going to get your value. Not, that's a very small-sized box. Yeah, it is. It's pretty tiny. Um, 
And, of course, they're releasing a line of four Brawl decks, pre-constructed Brawl decks, like the pre-constructed Commander decks. We will and have a lot to say about those when that time bet. comes. You bet, because we love Brawl. Now, are you excited to reveal our card to our audience? Okay, so when we saw this card, uh, <laughs> like when Phil showed it to me last week, my jaw literally dropped. I believe we might even have it on camera because we were still just hanging around. But I was just completely oh, slack-jawed at how ridiculous this is for the exact kind of decks I like to play. So, having now uh, teased you guys enough, uh, let me introduce to you Dance of the Mance. Mm-hmm. X with white and blue, so X plus two monocos, for a sorcery rare. Uh, return up to X target artifact or or X target artifact and or non aura enchantment cards, each with a converted monocos X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's mm-hmm. a first sentence. Literally, <laughs> pay X, get X cards that are uh, either enchantment or uh well non or enchantment or artifacts that cost less than x bring them to the battlefield that unto itself is bananas that's pretty good yeah and think about it you can bring back corsair of crufix that's an enchantment yeah it you is could, you could bring back a uh, biden to thassa you could bring back thassa herself thassa uh, herself but second line if x is six or more <laughs> these permanents are four four creatures in addition to their other types Supersize your course of improvements, yep. or turn that soul ring into a four four soul. Yeah, if somebody vandal blasted and now your artifacts are in the the yard, you can turn that soul ring into a four four soul ring. How about that? Or if you happen to have to use your never Navinral's disc reset button and mm-hmm. blew up all your own artifacts and enchantments and everything, you can bring them back as big giant honkers and uh, go to town. Yep. Especially if you have something like Starfield or Nix in play or yep. any of these other just... God, this card, dude, it is nuts. It it's is pretty com- good. I mean, even just a surface reading of this card is completely bananas. Like, first off, just being able to recur your uh, artifacts and enchantments to the battlefield unto itself is huge. Like, yeah. Replenish is a really expensive card that does this almost exact same thing. And this thing also brings back artifacts. Yeah. And then you've got... Turning them into just giant creatures. Now, okay, so here's a scenario I'd like you to envision, Phil. If I were to, let's say, pay uh, six and two, so that's eight mana, to bring mm-hmm. back a whole bunch of, I don't know, artifacts and enchantments into play, one of them just happens to be Concordant Crossroads. Concordant Crossroads, of course, <laughs> being a one mana enchant world that gives all of your creatures haste. Hey, yeah. you know what just happened after I hit that reset button and and obliterated the whole table? Yeah. And I bring everything back from the graveyard, and then they all have haste, and I just go... Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because you can do that for uh, nine mana total, right? Because of the Navinral's disc activation costs. Uh, and then you bring back your creatures, your artifacts, rather, and enchantments, which includes the haste-giving Concordant Crossroads, or even, for that matter, Fervor, or any number of cards. Any number of things. Yep, that's cool. Um, so, notably, obviously, perhaps, you want to use this in white-blue blazed, en- <laughs> white, blazed Enchantress decks, like our other preview card, Tuvasa, from yes. last year. Um, you want to use the non-aura variant of Tuvasa. Um, but and, even uh, in... I'm sorry, even in the aura version, though... There's a lot of just utility enchantments that you have, like Enchantress's Presence, for instance, or any of these other just kind of like utility enchantments that you use to just get your card draw going. I don't know. I feel like this is just such a good card for any deck that has enchantment reliability or um, just, I don't know. God, this yeah. thing, I'm just imagining all the Theros cards going crazy with this. Yeah, exactly. Um, all, all those the creatures you can bring them back from the grave. Yep. And in, oh. including the new Nylea's Colossus, which is no slouch. Yeah, anyway, it's awesome, and we can go into that, and we're probably going to do a dual Tuvasa deck tech where we talk about Shivam's Tuvasa and my Tuvasa. They're both different. And uh, this will definitely be in, in mine and uh, probably in Shivam's as well, oh, yeah. if we can get the critical mass of Don Auras. All I know is I want my Sylvan Library to attack somebody for four points of uh, power. And let's go back to even just the more basic user case for non-enchantment players 
nearly everybody runs artifacts in EDH. And if you're playing something like Brea or if you're playing something like um, any of these kind of like multicolored like enchantment and artifact based decks, even just paying three mana and getting, you know, one soul ring back from your yard is not terrible. You know, yeah, it's not too bad. if you pay like a handful of mana and just get a bunch of mana rocks back, that's actually pretty solid. You know, that's true. You think about that as uh, three mana to get a 4-4 creature into play if it's a soul ring. <laughs> well, no, the 4-4 four four is only if you pay six or more. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I got a but, little giddy. But I'm just thinking about just even just being able to recur your mana rocks in EDH is so big. Or even just any utility artifact, anything with an ETB trigger, any of your enchantments or artifacts that just happen to come into play and do a thing, yep. that can get pretty disgusting. Yep. That commander's I, sphere can come back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you could, I mean, I'm sure there's like recursion tricks you can do with this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, one of the decks that uh, occurred to me when I first saw it was the Esper Artifacts uh, Sharoom deck. Sharoom yes. is just, does not lack for recursion. And this is another way to bring those creatures back. Uh, sorry, those artifacts back. And this time as creatures, not just as artifacts. Oh, absolutely. Um, and Shivam and uh, uh, sometimes guest host Olivia, they both run Brea decks, and I'm sure you're going to find a home for this in 100%. that Brea deck. 100%. Yeah. So, like, my Brea Sorry. deck is all about throwing uh, artifacts into the yard with yep. things like Ashna's Altar, Phyrexian Altar. Uh, throwing them all away, recurring... Okay, so imagine this. Imagine having Urza in play, let's say. You tap all your artifacts for a blue mana. Then you throw all your artifacts away into the yard with uh, Ashen Adulter making a jillion more mana. Yep. Then you recur them all back with Dance of the Many. Play they don't cut it being cast, so you can't get your storm count up. Dance of the Mans. Dance of the Mans. Yeah. Dance of the Mans. This is a Beauty and the Beast when all the furniture starts just jumping around. Yep, yep. Now, think about it. You pitch all your artifacts, you get a ton of mana, recur them all back with Dance of the Mans, and then either do it again or just like lob a gigantic fireball at the table uh it's gross this could yep. be huge i mean i feel that this card has got like i'm just even thinking like vintage man think about bringing back all of those moxes it's too expensive maybe, maybe. <laughs> i don't play vintage yeah I'm, you, I'm, I'm an EDH cmc3 player. or bust that's the that's the peak of the their curve um, you know, uh, some of the tricks you can use, because these are creatures, let's say you fear a board wipe, you and and uh, <laughs> you can use something like Conjurer's Closet or Deadeye Navigator to flip it, to bounce it back, um, and when you bounce it and it com returns, it comes back in as an artifact or enchantment, no longer a creature, assuming that you've paid the six mana to get them back as creatures. Uh, and there are a number of effects like that. The uh, Eldrazi Displacer, the... Right. Uh, um, even rune, right? A number of uh, effects will bring this back. So, uh, and, it's pretty know, this, cool. This card just seems like there's so much utility and possibility here. This is actually like, it's almost kind of shocking how strong this card looks to me. Yeah. And yeah, I, think I think in our format where your mana cost, uh, where your mana can get huge, I just oh, this is gross. I love it. Yeah. And uh, in, in Throne of Eldraine, it looks like Throne of Eldraine is going to be an Enchantment Matters block. Um, and, uh, uh, and sorry, and or Artifact Matters block, but not in the same way that Kaladesh was. So uh, we should be having fun with this. It's going to be awesome. Oh, man. Uh, so listeners and viewers, audience members, if you would write in and tell us how you're going to use Dance of the... Uh, Dance of the Mance. Now, I almost said Dance of the Many, too. Dance of you Many, know, of course, is an old You can card, get Dance so. of the Many back. The enchantment from the dark that lets you create a clone copy of something. Yeah. It's an enchantment. You just don't pay the upkeep. It goes to the yard. You can bring it back with Dance of the Mance. That's yeah, true. <laughs> and then you can Very have Mance true. of the Many, uh, which sounds like a really great um, like RPG character name. <laughs> um, gosh, so, I'm just like, there's so many things you could do with this card that are so cool. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, oh and uh, I don't play Brea, but I definitely do have a home for this card, so we'll see it. Um, oh. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm just thinking of things like Thopter Assembly or... Uh, so, I don't know. It, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what people come up with. I think there's a lot of potential here. Yep, absolutely. 
four four base power and toughness on a hanger rack walker. Just saying. Um, okay, so that's where we're going to call it this time because we can just keep going about this thing. Um, it's going to be awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, oh audience, and uh, um, we will probably well no, and uh, we will see you next time. Yeah, right. What am I saying here? I'm punchy. It's hot. <laughs> it's serious. Hey, everyone. My name is Gavin Verhey. I'm a senior game designer and product architect at Wizards of the Coast. So I make up what the cards do and work on our products. And I'm so excited today to be talking to you about Throne of Eldraine. This set was a very long time in the making. And it feels like such a wonderful, wonderful relief to have it out in the public and to be able to finally share all this cool stuff with you. So Throne of Eldraine, of course, had lots of top-down resonant stories, both from Camelot and Fairy Tales, and these were really important to us as we were working on the set. So we tried to look for various tropes, and a big one that you find, of course, is all over media, is inanimate objects becoming animated. And especially there's that classic kitchen scene or, you know, you think of all kinds of various movies where, or books, where things in the kitchen get animated, whether it's just a, a spell, a tiny spell, or a horrible apprentice gone awry. There's all kinds of opportunities for, for this. And so that's where the kind of the flavor of this card was. The design is was interesting. We wanted something that would animate a bunch of inanimate objects or get them back. And... So the dance started off as an enchantment, actually, that came into play and let you return every turn an enchantment or artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield. And then you could pay mana to animate them. I think it was like a blue and a white, and you could make it a creature till end of turn. We fooled around with that for a little while, but it didn't really have this moment of Everything is, is dancing now, right? The, this moment of, wow, it's, it's, all, it's all alive. It's suddenly all come alive. And instead, it was like this slow, grindy engine where you would bring back enchantments and sacrifice them. And not to mention the issue where you bring back more copies of itself. And that was kind of problematic. So we made it a, a sorcery instead of one-shot spell that let you bring a bunch of things back at once. And to me, this is, this is a super exciting card for Constructed and especially Commander. I mean, think about your Estra decks getting a bunch of stuff back. All at once with that enchantment focus. Um, all kinds of decks will want to be able to bring back a huge swath of things from the graveyard. And then animating them is just, is just an extra blast. Um, it, six or more, you know, we looked at a bunch of different numbers, but six just felt right. The, I asked Andrew Brown, he's like, yep, you know, we made some changes to this card late and um, we felt like six would be the appropriate amount for it. And plus eight. And Commander, you can get to 8 mana, no problem. So I hope you all have fun with the dance. It was a fun little card we got to make up. Throne of Eldraine is full of these kind of hits. And enjoy playing with the set. We put a ton of effort into it. So from everyone here in at Wizards of the Coast, all the way back to you, wherever you're listening, thank you. Hope you enjoy the, the podcast. And have a blast with Throne of Eldraine. Webcam is blinking, by the way. Like it, it, it flashes periodically. I see it. I the saw that. Of my eye. I yep. yeah, like right then. What's that? What's that? That has never happened before. Dun dun dun. Nope, oh, there it goes again. Yeah, I definitely, definitely see what you're talking about. And we can edit this out through the magic of not of being live streaming right now. Software, yeah. It was not doing that before. It has never done it before. Well, we can live with it. In that frame or whatever is missing, I can just throw like some kind of flaming skull or something.